Oh hi, good morning and welcome once again to Back Online. I hope you're doing well. I hope it is well with you and your family. I pray that you be blessed today. David said, I was glad when he said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Um, thank you for honoring God of your presence today and um, by joining us. So before we go ahead, there are a couple of notices and uh, I want to bring to your attention. And most of them are centered on our um, Easter um, celebrations. So the first one will be um, the Beck Live um, service on the Good Friday and it will start at 10.30 a.m. on Zoom. And all the details will be on the website. The link to the Zoom um, will be on the website. So please join us and you'll be blessed in Jesus' name. And on the Easter Sunday, we'll have our normal Easter celebration service at 10.30 a.m. And um, this will be on YouTube and also on the website. So please join us and I know that um, God will actually come through for you and you'll be blessed in Jesus' name. And the final Easter event is, is the one on Easter Saturday and it will be a treasure hunt. So please join us. All the details um, will be on the website. If you want to be part of the treasure hunt, you need to sign up on the website. So please go to the website and all the details will be there. And also, um, at the end of every service, we have um, our wonderful prayer team um, um, praying for people who need prayer. So please join them. So today, after the service, uh, please go to the website. The link um, to the Zoom is there. Um, you can join the service. You can be prayed for if you need a prayer for a family member, uh, a colleague, whatever situation it is. I believe God will come true for you as you join them. I pray that God will bless you today as you go through today's service. I pray that um, you prepare your heart so that you will sow a seed and that will be a blessing unto you and generations to come. In Jesus' name, once again, welcome, God bless you and enjoy the service. Hello, Bethany. Hi. Hi. You all right? Yeah, good, thank you. I'm um, sorry for any background noise. Daddy! Uh, Daddy. Oh, no. That's Daddy. Who's this? Daddy. Who's this, though? Daddy. That's Beth. Daddy. Bethany. Daddy. And um, who's, who is Bethany's son? Can you see? Who's, oh, oh. who's this? Noah. Noah, yes. Looks like Noah's just woken up. Wait, Noah's Noah's Noah. Noah. Say hiya. Hey, Noah. <laughs> What's your name? Sorry if there's any background noise of cars or banging or... Hey, Noah. Or this one. <laughs> Noah. Uh, this is working hey. from home and parenting from home. I just want to say congratulations on getting the job thank you um, so yeah well done and can you say well done to bethany say well done well done thank you very much Bethany. um and yeah i thought it'd just be great to kind of catch up and um obviously the church know that uh, you're our children lead uh, which is really exciting you've all, already uh, done a holiday club uh, via zoom which was very exciting and um, is, that's is that on youtube yeah well, it's highlights real for every day highlight reel so uh, check it out it's on the main beck church youtube it's all on playlists along okay. with all of the links to the bible the, the bible stories and the sketches for each day um are on each day so yeah and check that out. Yeah, check that out. Um, also, um, uh, Bethany is Bethany is um, uh, started Children's Live as well, um, which we did our second one. Second one. Um, Sunday. Um, this is uh, March the twenty second. So um, yesterday. Uh, which was awesome at the uh, the Beck Centre. So yeah, Bethany's doing some amazing stuff already, 
and I thought it'd be a really good time um, for us to pray her into the role and just uh, um, bless her really. So let's pray for you, um, Bethany. Um, for the guys at home, feel free to reach out a hand um, or however you pray, jump up and down, roll around on the floor or sit down with you a nice cup of coffee. Um, let's, um, but let's pray for, for Bethany. Lord, I want to thank you so much for Bethany. Uh, thank you that she got this um, job and that she's doing a, an incredible job already. I pray that you will give her wisdom and discernment and how to um, do more face-to-face -face children's work as well and uh, give her wisdom and discernment on what um, you want her to do. But Lord, I just pray more than the activities and the children's work that she's going to be doing, I pray that she will um, come to know you more, that you'll fill her up with your Holy Spirit and that she'll follow your calling um, and your um, pace of life, Lord Jesus, um, in whatever she does. I pray for um, her work with the rest of the team. I pray that um, as we start coming face to face and working face to face, I pray that you will um, bless her and I pray that she would play a key part in the staff team, Lord. And I just want to thank you for the children um, that uh, we have at Beck. Um, I pray that you would lead them to come to know you more and more and that these guys will um, not just grow up um, being... Um, <laughs> being um, a part of your church and a part of um, um, what you want them to be but they'll be <laughs> that you would bless our children now Lord Jesus they are the church for now uh, so Lord I just thank you for um, the children we have and I pray that you would um, bless Bethany as she leads them and disciples them in your glorious name I pray Amen Amen. Amen. Thanks, no worries. Um, is there anything you'd like to share um, to our church or anything like that? Um, I'm getting looking forward to getting to know the children and the team and the families a lot more and, and specifically looking forward to kind of some face to face stuff where we can just hang out and get to know each other and the Lord a bit better. Amen to that. Amen to that. Well, lovely to chat. Um, and I hope you have a great rest of the day. And <laughs> lovely to see you. And I hope you have a great rest of the day. And I'm uh, looking forward to seeing you soon. Bye. Say bye bye, Bethany. Bye. 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 Yeah, say <laughs>
Good morning everybody and welcome to Palm Sunday. I'm Erica and I'm Karen and we're going to talk a little bit about what Palm Sunday means to us today and have a little bit of fun along the way. So 
We all know that Palm Sunday was the day a week before Jesus died when he went into Jerusalem, Karen? We do, yeah. We're going to have to look a little bit at that and see why he rode on a donkey and why he made a palm tree. And of course, to do that, we're going to need to make those things, aren't we? Definitely. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Over so, to you. I'm going to make a donkey for you guys. Yay! Da -da. So, you should have all had packs delivered to your homes and you kids. You should have found um, a pack that Bethany put together for you with lots of items in um, to make a donkey. So, and if you're not sure, and if you haven't got a pack, then you can check it out on the website and you can find what you need there and get, get your bits together and then you can make a donkey too. So, I'm um, gonna make the donkey. I'm gonna start with blowing up my balloon, like so. Go on, Karen, you can do it, <laughs> you can do it. Well done. <laughs> Excellent. Oh, what about that? How about Excellent. that? Can you nice tie it? fat donkey, and then I need to tie it off. So let's see. Careful you don't get your fingers trapped. You might need to get mum and dad or uh, grandma or granddad to help you with that. There we go. Well done. There's my nice fat, fat donkey. So, oh, and don't forget, don't blow your balloon up too much because you might burst it, and that wouldn't be a good thing. So, and the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a head on the donkey some feet on the donkey, some legs rather, not just feet, um, and a tail. And uh, yeah, so I'm going to get on with that. And in the meantime, Erica, we know that Jesus rode into Jerusalem on a donkey, but why? Why did he choose a donkey? Well, it's good news, Karen, because Jesus was doing it for a few reasons, really. One was he was showing that God was keeping his promises. Way back hundreds of years ago, God promised that there was going to be a new kind of king come who would come riding on a donkey. Now, that was quite unusual. It was not the usual kind of animal that kings rode on. Donkeys were for ordinary people. People used them in their fields. They used them to carry stuff for them. And so Jesus was showing that he was the kind of king who was coming to us ordinary human beings and that he was one of us but also he was showing that he was coming in peace because kings used horses for war donkeys weren't used for fighting and so Jesus was saying I'm a new king coming to you as one of you for you and to bring you peace all of that wrapped up in Jesus sitting on a donkey that's amazing, isn't it? That is really amazing. That's How are you getting so on? Cool. So I'm nearly there. I'm just putting the tail on the donkey, not pinning it on because we might burst our balloon. <laughs> there we Different go. Different game altogether. Different game, yeah. <laughs> so it now has a tail. Ta da Excellent. And the final bit you need to do with your donkey, it's got some legs, it's got a face, um, is you can put a bit of string on the top, like this if I don't crush its legs. You just tape a little bit of string on the top like that and then you can walk your donkey round or you can hang it up and this will be a reminder to you that actually Jesus came to keep God's promise um, that he would send us a new kind of king just for ordinary people like you, like me and Erica um, and that he came to bring us peace. Yeah, that's that's brilliant. How cool is that? I have to say, it, it does remind me a bit more of a Palm Sunday pig than a donkey, but I, I think it's I think it's fantastic. I think you've done a really good job, Karen. Thanks for that. <laughs> oh, I dear. like my donkey. It's a lovely donkey. It's a lovely donkey pig. Okay, so moving on, we're going to do a palm tree, which probably won't look any more like a palm tree than the donkey looks like a donkey. But let's give it a go, hey. <laughs> All right, so what I've got here is I've got some newspaper. I've actually got two pieces of newspaper that I've stuck together because I want a really big palm tree. And then I've just rolled them up and stuck them together with some more sellotape. So all you're going to do to make your palm tree, I say all, let's see how this goes. All you're going to do is you're going to make some cuts from one end going right through all the layers of newspaper. So if you've got a lot of paper, it might be a bit tough to do it. 
don't <laughs> cut your fingers off. Try not to cut your fingers off because you'll just get blood on your palm tree and that's not what we want, is it? No. Bit of a mess to clear up, so try not to do that. Try and just cut down the same length and the longer you do it, the longer your leaves will be. So it's up to you how long you want your palm leaves to be. I think I'm going to make mine a little bit longer, like that. And then all you have to do... Dum, dum, Here we dum. go. Here we go. <laughs> Let's see if it works. <laughs> so all you want to do is find the middle and take a few of your palm leaves from the middle and very gently, so you don't rip them, as I've done several times in practicing this, Ooh. you just pull them up from the middle and the more you pull, the longer and bigger your palm tree will grow. Wow, like it's like magic. magic. <laughs> oh it's our God. magic tree. <laughs> so this is quite good to wave. It's quite good to poke people. <laughs> Oi. Um, but Karen, tell us a little bit about why palm leaves on Palm Sunday. OK, so there were lots of palm trees in Jesus' um, country, and the, just like there are today. Um, and people laid these palm branches out on the ground for heroes or important people like kings um, to walk on. And it's a bit like we would spread out a red carpet today, you know, for famous people or the Queen even. Um, so it's a bit like that. And um, they would wave their palm branches uh, around in the festivals when they were praising God. Because um, the palm branches are a reminder to us to be happy that Jesus is our King. So that's really cool, isn't it? Um, and it also reminds us that Jesus came at Easter time to forgive us for everything that we've done wrong and to bring new life and allow us to have a friendship with God. That's amazing, isn't it? It, it is amazing. It's amazing. It is amazing. And uh, no matter how good or how bad your crafts are, just have a go, have some fun this Easter. And Try it. remember that Jesus came to be a king for people like us, to bring us peace. And it's something we should celebrate. Amen to that. So, thank you for watching, guys. Hope you have fun. <laughs> we'll see you again soon, hopefully. Bye. Bye. Hey, it's great to be with you. Uh, my name is Roy Crown, part of the church. You may have seen me in the Wellbeing series uh, covering one of the issues around money. And uh, that was such an amazing series and it's gone extremely well. So I trust that your small group enjoyed it and I pray that your well-being has improved as a result of it. But we're now looking at probably the most historical event in history as we move in to this Easter. And it's not just historic, it's a reality for you today. It's a reality that you can experience because he is alive and present with us. But on this Sunday, Palm Sunday, we're all in our homes, but on that occasion, Jesus was put on a donkey. The reason there was a donkey is if you sat on a horse, it was a symbol of war and going to war, but sitting on a donkey was a sense of peace. And the king of peace, the prince of peace, was riding on a donkey into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday. And people had to celebrate, they had to worship because they believed the savior, the king of the world was coming in on that occasion. So as we step into this Holy Week, let's just reference this Jesus. And whether you've experienced him or not, I'm really pleased that you're with us this morning. And in whatever setting, whether you're sitting at home, drinking coffee, whatever your setting, my prayer is that this will be a moment where you will encounter this risen Jesus and understand something of the gospel. This has been an amazing year. This week, we actually recognized a day of reflection on the 23rd, a year 
of lockdown. And I don't know how you felt when that happened. A lot of emotions, some people have lost loved ones. But for every one of us during this year, our lives have completely changed. But what you need to understand is during this year, there's been an unprecedented opportunity as people have looked for hope, as people have tried to understand all this confusion and what is going on, there's been a massive increase in people connecting online with the Church of Jesus Christ. And there's been a massive increase. Just look at Alpha that, that Nicky Gumbel said he would never take online. It was always around food and, and you'd enjoy the food and, and fellowship together around tables and then look at the videos. He put it online and the reach as far outweighed any other alpha that has ever been done. Because people can sit and they can watch the videos and then engage on Zoom or online and the stories, I heard of one story of a vicar who decided to take the risk and just run an alpha course. And he was just on, I think, week four, and he was talking to one of the participants. They had a little bit of time just before the evening, other people joined, and he just said, how was your weekend? And the guy said, it was amazing. He said, why, what was amazing? He said, I became a Christian. He said, really? He said, yeah. Where did you go? Did you go to church? He said, I went to your church. And, and you said, if anyone here didn't know Jesus and wanted to have a personal relationship, he said, so I did. And he said, it's impacted my life. That's what's happened during this year. And if you've never experienced that, then this morning, Jesus is inviting you into that relationship. And Easter is what makes all that possible. But this is a gospel for the whole world. I was asked to speak on the cosmic impact of this gospel, which is Jesus's life, death and resurrection. And I just want to unpack that a little bit. The passage I was given was Acts chapter 8 where we actually look at the first Gentile, someone out of the Jewish tradition, out of the nation of Israel, that encountered Christ. An Ethiopian eunuch, probably an African. And it's into this context that we're going to pick up the story. And it's an amazing story because what it shows is how, if you're a follower of Jesus, you can hook your life up to the story of God and bring about the most amazing transformation that can ever happen. You see, you can engage in telling this good news story. You and I are the champions of that. We may be missing meeting together as a church. Paul referenced China last week and the impact on China. Do you know China? In 1949, there were probably a million Christians. Now there's, they don't know, there are millions, but they've never gathered as a church. They can't gather as a church, but it's all small group. It's all one-on-one -on -one conversations. And let me tell you, the impact of the gospel is always out of relationship, moving into proximity. And we've been socially distanced, but we've been digitally more connected than we've ever been. There's WhatsApp groups on streets. I was talking to a lady just this week who decided that she was gonna set up a WhatsApp group in her cul-de-sac. And they started doing things on WhatsApp. They did a quiz virtually. Then they distributed things, and then they just met in the street, socially distanced, and they started to ask her about her faith. And as they started to ask her about the faith, she had an opportunity to tell her story. You see, what happened in Acts 8 is the only way we're going to change the world in 2008 
in 2021 because it's the way life works. So let's pick up the story. In Acts 8, we read this about Philip, Philip the evangelist. Philip was actually appointed as a deacon, but he was full of the spirit and he was actually commissioned to deal with the widows and orphans because there was a criticism going on in Acts 6. So he was appointed, became an evangelist. And you may think, well, I'm not an evangelist, Roy. You think us evangelists, we're extrovert. You're a certain type. You always find it easy to communicate Jesus' love, death and resurrection. No, but you still need to take a step of faith. You're always fearful of rejection. You're always uncertain as to what the outcome. There's no escape from that. But then God tends to do something amazing with the evangelist. But all of us are part of this. So Philip, this is what we read. An angel of the Lord said to Philip, go south to the road, the, de the, de the desert road that goes down from Jerusalem and Gaza. So he started out and on his way, he met an Ethiopian eunuch. That is mentioned five times in this little passage. And you need to understand he was an official in charge of the treasury, uh, queen of Ethiopians. This man had gone to Jerusalem to worship and on his way home was sitting in the chariot reading the book of Isaiah the prophet. The spirit told Philip, go to that chariot and stay near to it. Then Philip ran up to the chariot and heard the man reading Isaiah the prophet. First thing I want to say is that when you have the courage to send a WhatsApp message to a friend or maybe on Facebook or maybe tweet, you're actually giving the potential of God to use that by his spirit as a divine appointment. You see, the way God has always worked is when people are sent. If you look back into the gospels, Jesus sent out the 70. They were nervous, they were scared, they were frightened. They weren't sure what the outcome was gonna be, but he sent them out. And he sent them out because he knew that the way you understand this gospel is through an individual follower of Jesus. It's the primary way that this message is understood because you have an experience of the spirit. You have an experience of forgiveness. You have experience of new life. That story connects with other people. So Philip comes out of a revival situation to have a conversation with one individual. And in that conversation, we often realize that the poor, the needy, the orphans, God has a special place in their heart, but God also has a special place for everyone. It's clearly this Ethiopian was very wealthy. He owned his own chariot. To own the prophet scroll of Isaiah, you need a lot of money to access that. He was very wealthy and because of the position he had, that's why he was a eunuch. That was often what would happen in those settings. And he's religious, he's a worshiper. And he's coming back from worship. Maybe you've been in a worship experience, but you see other people experiencing something of the spirit, but you never have, you've been in a worship experience. You've been with a body of people. Maybe you've seen something online, but it's not happened for you. And you're thinking, how do I get that divine encounter? Well, God will send you, maybe it's me this morning or this evening or whenever you're watching this, but God will send you someone that's a follower, and they'll ask the question. And as he comes alongside the chariot, he hears what the Ethiopian is reading. And
And he realized that God has sent him to this person for such a time as this. See, until you send, until you go, you don't know what's happening in people's lives. You don't know what they're struggling with. You don't know what they're thinking about. You don't know what they're reading. But until you go, and then as you go, you discover things and you think, this person is ripe to discover hope and the presence of Jesus. This person is who I've been sent to, to pray for, to connect with. I was talking to somebody in Switzerland this week uh, as part of a global thing. There was uh, 25 people, Brazil, whole nations of the world. And this guy in Switzerland told me a story of a friend that he'd heard who got a connection in Iran. And this Iranian had watched the Jesus film. He didn't fully understand it, but he'd watched the Jesus film. And that Jesus film has been translated. It's around the world. It's global. It's everywhere. And this Iranian had watched the film, but he worked on a train. And as he was working on the train on this particular occasion, with the film still in his mind, he looked at the amount of croissants that he had on his trolley. And he thought, I've not got enough croissants for all these people that are probably going to buy and purchase from me. So he prayed because he, what he'd seen in the Jesus film of bread being multiplied. And when he got to the end of the carriages, he discovered that he had a few croissants left and everybody had received a croissant. He'd prayed previous. He was religious, but he'd never encountered the savior of the world who's called Jesus. And at the end, when he got to the carriage, he prayed to it, accept Jesus Christ and became a Christian. And his life has changed, let me tell you, completely changed. So have you had that divine encounter? But then there's a process. So Philip sent, he's running alongside the chariot. I'm not sure how that's working. Then he hears what's being read. And let me tell you what is being read is from the book of Isaiah, which right fits in with this particular story. And this is what he read, he hears being read. Philip ran out to the chariot, heard what was being read. Do you understand what you have read, Philip asked. How can I, he said, unless someone explains it to me. So he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. This is the passage of scripture that the eunuch was reading. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter. And as a lamb before his shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. In his humiliation, he was deprived of justice. Who can speak of his descendants? For his life was taken from the earth. And the eunuch asked Philip, tell me please, who is the prophet talking about? Himself or someone else? Then Philip began with the very passage of scripture and told him the good news of Jesus Christ. Let me tell you something. People don't fully understand the word of God and they need it explaining and we need to sit alongside people. That's why Alpha is so amazing, Christianity Explored. It, it's in conversation, doing just, do you want to read the Bible together with a friend? You'd be surprised. We produced this, which was a little book that's just Mark's gospel in a contemporary way and students sat down with many, many students when they could last year and said, would you love to read the Bible? And let me tell you the interest around the Bible during COVID, sales of the Bible have gone up. Why? Because people are interested. And he said, sit down, explain it to me. There are people in your street, maybe in your home, that will love to understand the Bible because it talks of Jesus and the good news of Jesus. And the passage he was reading is all about what the prophet in Isaiah, hundreds of years before, had predicted and prophesied that a lamb would be slaughtered for you and me. And understanding the cross, do you get it? Do you understand as we step into this holy week when Jesus prayed why there was anguish, why there was emotion? 
because he understood the impact. He understood that as a lamb going to slaughter, when people jeered at him and mocked him and laughed at him and then punched him upwards according to the scripture and said, who hit you that time? Tell us, you, you claim to be king, you claim to be a prophet, but the passage said, like a lamb led to slaughter, he didn't open his mouth. Then they pulled chunks of his beard out. Why is all that graphic detail found in Isaiah? Because you cannot worship God without your emotions being stirred. And the saviour of the world who comes in on this Palm Sunday and they celebrate a week on is led like a lamb to be slaughtered. Why? Because he loves you so much. He loves a broken world. And what we need to do is allow engagement in God's word. We need to engage with it. So there's a divine encounter, but then there's engagement, there's discussion, there's sitting on the chariot. He's going through the scriptures and explaining, this is what your human heart is like. You're separated from God. This is what God did in stepping into our world. This is why Jesus came. He laid down his life. This is the gospel. And it's for everyone. It's for you, it's for me. It's for the religious, the non-religious, the orphaned, the rich, the politician, everyone is invited. So we engage with the text and he used all of it. But the final thing is that there was a divine encounter. Philip was used to come alongside the Ethiopian eunuch. Who's God going to use you to come alongside this week? Secondly, he engaged the truth of God's word. But the final thing that happened was there was an experience. Because as they're traveling, it says in the scripture, as they're traveling, they traveled along, they came up some water and the eunuch said, look, here is water. What can stand in the way of me being baptised? And he gave orders to stop the chariot. Then both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water and Philip baptised him. It's really interesting if you look at the scripture. Between 36 and 38, 37 is not there. Because some manuscripts don't have that. But in 37 it says that there Philip said to the eunuch, if you believe with all your heart, that Jesus was raised from the dead and Jesus is the Colonel of God, you will believe and be baptised. You see, once you've encountered, then you've engaged, you've got to do something. You see, it takes a step of faith. It takes you and I, with all of our questions, with all of our doubts, with all of our fears, actually, saying, I'm going to pray. And then not just pray, maybe as a mark of you're a follower of Jesus, be baptised. Actually, through baptism, you're actually laying down your life with all its selfishness, pain, guilt, suffering and shame, coming up to a new life in resurrection power with the Lord Jesus Christ. So this Ethiopian stops the chariot, he says, let's go down. What's to stop us now? Let me tell you something. There's nothing to stop you now meeting the risen Lord Jesus. But some of us, when we're like Philip and we've been sent and we've gone and We've engaged with the Bible, we miss the final piece, which is to offer the invitation. Do you want to give your life to Christ? Do you want to be baptised? Because then the fear is, what if they reject me? What if they turn aside? What, what, oh no. Listen, this gospel demands a response. And when you make that decision, it's the best decision you could ever make. This Easter, 
It's the greatest decision you could ever make. So the Ethiopian says, let's go and be baptized. And he goes down into the water. How they found water in the desert, I don't know. That seems to have been a miracle. And then Philip baptized him and then he goes. You see, this gospel is multiplying all around the world. This gospel is because there have been literally thousands and thousands of people that their life has been transformed and they've been sent. And once they've been sent, they've just come alongside people, maybe gave them some food, maybe connected into their life, discovered something about their life and discovered this Jesus can meet them right where they are. Then they've engaged with them in understanding the good news. They've understood that there's shame in their lives. There's guilt, there's pain, there's loss. But this Jesus can deal with all that. And then they've offered it. That's why the Christian faith is multiplying around the world. Because this message is not self-improvement. It's not get good. God knows you're not good and I'm not good. He sent a saviour, which is what we read, to deal with my sin and come and change my life. So today, in preparation for Easter, as we step into this Holy Week, I'm gonna give you two options. First of all, if you're a follower of this Jesus, I want you to know God is sending you this week. He's sending you to encounter someone. I don't know how you're gonna do it, socially distance, maybe give a gift, maybe, I don't know, but he's sending you. Because God is a center God, he's a goer. And then when you go, explain what Holy Week's all about. But then don't finish. Say, do you want to experience this? Because you can. But maybe you are like the eunuch. You've sat in your chariot. You've got everything in your life. But there's a nagging thought, I haven't really got everything. There's an emptiness. The Bible says there's a void. And God's saying to you this morning, I'm here. I died for you. It's personal, it's real. Invite me in. I'm inviting you through him to invite him into your life. And then maybe to mark it, you should think about being baptised. You should think about being part of the sent group to change the world. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for the opportunity of your word. Thank you for the way it speaks to us today. It is amazing. And I pray now in Jesus' name that this living word that I've spoken of would change homes, would change families, would change individuals because Jesus is still doing that today by the power of your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Amen.
Bless you so much for joining today's service. I hope you've been blessed and for a wonderful message, a new world. Um, I pray that as you go through the week, God will keep you safe, God will protect you and your family in all that you do in Jesus' name. I want to encourage you once again, please, um, if you need prayer, or if you want to, if, even if you don't need prayer and you want, you want to actually join the team to pray for people, um, please um, join the prayer team after the service. The details um, or the link to the Zoom is also on the website. And also on the website, there are a whole lot of materials that could be a blessing unto you. Maybe you want to listen to this message again or a particular message you want to actually listen to again. Go to the website or go to our YouTube channel and you have access to. If you need information, 
about other uh, activities in the church, including our wonderful live groups, please go to the website or maybe children's service or the youth service. Go to the website and you you find all the details there. God bless you as you go through the, the week. May he keep you safe in everything you do. May he protect you and your family once again. In Jesus' mighty name, pray. Amen. God bless you. Bye-bye.